Hello friends, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today, I will introduce you to some basic terminologies of process management in operating system. Program versus process. A process is a program in execution. For example, when we write a C, C++ code and compile it, the compiler creates a binary code. The original code and the binary code both are programs. When we actually run the binary code, it becomes a process. Process is an active entity as opposed to a program which is a passive entity. A single program can create many processes when run multiple times. For example, when we open a a.exe or a binary file or a notepad multiple times, many instances begin, that is, many processes are created. What does a process look like in memory? Stack contains the temporary data such as function parameters, written address and local variables. Heap section contains the dynamically allocated memory to process during its runtime. Now, data section contains the global variables. The text section contains the executable instructions of the program. It also contains the current activity represented by the value of program count. Attributes or characteristics of a process. First is process ID, a unique identifier assigned by the operating system to each process. Second is process state. This can be ready, running, waiting, etc. CPU registers are like program count. Fourth is the account information. Fifth is input output status information for example devices allocated to a process open files etc cpu scheduling algorithm for example priority different processes may have different priorities for example a short process may be assigned a low priority in the shortest job first schedule all the above attributes of a process are also known as context of the process every process has its own program control block that is each process will have a unique process control block all the above attributes are part of the process control block states of a process initially process will be in new state it means process is under creation or a process is being created once the process is created, it will be moved to the ready state. In the ready state, there will be multiple number of processes. One of the process will be selected from the ready state and dispatched onto the running state. In the running state, process occupies the CPU and executes the instructions of the process. In the running state, one process can be at any point of the time. Wait or block state. If the running process required any input output, then it will come to wait state. In wait state, there will be multiple number of processes. It means multiple process will perform input output operations simultaneously. Blocked suspended. If the resources are not sufficient to maintain the process in the wait or block state, then some of the process with low priority maybe will be suspended and they will be moved to the suspended blocked state. In this, the process reside in the backing store. Ready suspended. If the resources are not sufficient to maintain the process in the ready state, then some of the processes will be suspended and moved to the very suspended state. 
here also process resides in the backing store that is secondary storage terminated or completed state when the process completes its execution it is moved to terminated state context switch the process of saving the context of one process and loading the context of another process is known as context switching so when does context switching happen when a high priority process comes to ready queue compared to priority of running process so definitely higher priority will be given more priority and low priority process will be stopped and high priority process will start any interrupt occurs if any interrupt occurs it has to be handled at that time only user and kernel mode switch whenever there is a need of kernel mode it has to be switched urgently so there also context switching will happen preemptive cpu scheduling used context switch versus mode switch a mode switch occurs when cpu privilege level is changed For example when a system call is made or a fault occurs the kernel works in more privileged mode than a standard user task if a user wants to access things which are only accessible to the kernel a mode switch must occur the currently executing process need not to be changed during a mode switch a mode switch typically occurs for a process context switch to occur only the kernel can cause a context switch so for a context switch to occur you need to change the mode to kernel mode therefore we need to have mode switch cpu bound versus input bound processes A CPU bound process requires more amount of CPU time or spends more time in the running state while input out bound processes requires more amount of input output time and less amount of CPU time input output bound process takes more time in the waiting state Thank you for watching this video I hope you like this please leave us your likes and comments